Hey everybody, Shane Class here with Shane Talks Politics. You know, uh, it's been an interesting day today. I've been learning that when you truly seek God's voice, when you really listen for it, He speaks. And I did some listening today, and boy, did God have some things to say. And I believe the message that I received today wasn't just for me. Uh, this is for my community. And it starts, I'm just going to start this with a question. Is this working? But is what working, Shane? What, what are you talking about? Is, is what working? Is, is this working? Is this fighting? back and forth the, from the right and the left, the, the ones who wear masks, the ones who don't wear masks, the ones who want the jab, the ones who don't want the jab, the ones who want our schools to act like this, the ones who want our schools to act like that. Is this working? Is the way we're handling things working? Is all of this division working? In the comment section of the description of this video, I I called it Who's Winning the Fight for America? And I believe the answer is nobody. What is it we're fighting for if we lose the very soul of our country? What is it that we have left? What's going to be left when this is all over with? When the right wins or the left wins? When this ideology wins? When that ideology wins? Whatever happens. What's left? What are we fighting over? This is like a couple couple of adults, a mom and a dad that, that go through a divorce. And they're bickering back and forth. They're fighting and they get the attorneys involved. And when the attorneys go to battle and you start shelling out thousands and thousands of dollars behind your cause right to, to your attorney and and in the in the very end the the kids are, are are drugged through hell the she may win this and he may win that when it's all said and done you get this amount of money you get the house he gets the car whatever but in the very end you know who really won the attorneys your kids saw two adults that used to love each other acting like they hate each other. The, the, the friends get split and divided between the two sides. The families get split apart. Nobody's happy when it's all said and done. And in the end, all that fighting, all of that money, and what came of it? And I ask this, wouldn't it be better if those two adults just sat down and acted like two people who still lit, love each other as human beings, but they just couldn't get along and, and they figured out an amicable, an amicable way to deal with it? Amicable, that's a tough, tough one to spit out right now. But wouldn't that be better? And I know the kids would be better off. I know at the end of the day, what, what was a family could still operate as a unit my sister god bless her i don't know how she does it but she fought she has found a way to still work things out enough in in a broken relationship so that they can so that the kids can still have loving parents on each side and i think it's because my sister has has this this love in her heart for humanity this love in her heart for people and when there's love in your heart, there's no room for hate. When there's no room for hate, you figure it out. I know I grew up in this town. You know, right over there, just right on the other side, there's a, there's a Catholic school that my dad used to go to. And we used to come out here and there'd be all sorts of events going on here at the city park. Um, I, I grew up out in the country uh, farmland, you know, dad, dad farmed, I farmed, it was, uh, it, we, it was a community, 
when I went to school, I went to school at uh, Morningside Elementary. I spent uh, kindergarten there. Then I went to Lincoln Elementary uh, all through sixth grade. Then it was uh, Robert Stewart Junior High. And then I went to school at Twin Falls High School. These were my stomping grounds. Man, I, I rode my bicycle everywhere in this town. I used to, used to rollerblade out around this park right here and around CSI. And, uh, and uh, you know, growing up, Everybody kind of knew me as just a nice kid. I might have been a little bit goofy, a little bit weird to some, but I was just a nice kid. And what it was is I was raised to love people. And I loved my, I didn't have anybody I hated. There were people that didn't treat me very well and I didn't understand it because I always thought I was just a nice guy. I might've been a little goofy, you know, but even then I just didn't have capacity. I didn't have room for any kind of hate. When, when friends weren't getting along, uh, I was the voice of reason at that point. I, I would say, hey, listen, you know, it, it, maybe if you just kind of see things from their side and they see things from your side a little bit, you can find a middle ground somewhere that, that works. And, and I was that voice of reason and that voice that tried to bring people together. And I have to say, as I think about it, I... I don't wonder, I know there's been things during all of this since COVID happened that I got wrong. You know, we used to, man, we, we, this town was thriving. It was because we acted like a community. Bars were open till one o'clock in the morning. Uh, every one of them in town, their biggest frustration was, uh, was not that people weren't coming out. It was that people were staying out and they were just enjoying each other and enjoying each other's fellowship and friendship and meeting new people and there was live music around and uh, it was just a great time. I, I loved what happened to my town. I moved away. I moved up to Boise for a while. For 10, 15 years I was out of this town and I came back and and uh, and I just thought, man, this has just become a cool town. There's a lot of great things going on in the Magic Valley. And then I look around after COVID and yeah, sure. There's still some people that get out and do some things, but it's not it, it's not the same heart. It's not the same energy. It's not they don't stay open as late. You know, even Depot Grill used to be open 24. <coughs> excuse me, the allergies. But they were they were open what 24 hours. You had uh, you, you had several different restaurants that were open all night, and it was it was because people after they got done at the bars, they just wanted to go grab a bite to eat, and they were having so much fun enjoying each other. I'm not saying that bars are the great things. I'm just ha I'm using this as an example, that just to show that it's not the same community that it used to be, and I'm afraid I've played a part in that. My part. I'm. I don't. Not, I'm obviously not arrogant enough to think I'm responsible for it. That's much, much, much bigger than me. But each and every one of us had a part that we played in fueling the division. Now we can argue and debate about where the division started. It started. I believe there were there were people in our government. I believe there were people that that want to control the world that are part of fueling this hate hatred. But is the hatred working? So what started all of this today? Well, right here. This is why I came back here. This morning at 11 o'clock, the policemen get together every year. Law enforcement get together every year. And, and on this stage, they have a memorial for anyone who has fallen in the line of duty in the state of Idaho. And they go back to the, to the first officer ever to fall and they name, they remember them, and they name every one of them by name. And if there's any families that are, that are here that are still living, they, if they're here, they'll stand up, and the honor guard presents a rose to each one of those family members. And it's, it's just helpful to understand and remember the truly what it means to be a, a police officer, what, what, the, what the risks are. And as we came here, we put politics aside because that's not what they were, they're here for is the politics. They're here to remember. And so as individuals, I'm out, I was loving it. We were out here, we'd talk to, to our county commissioners, talk to several of the police officers. Um, uh, one of them we were talking, I was even talking to him about what's going on with Ammon Bundy over in, uh, uh, over in 
uh, in Emmett, uh, Jim County, and, and the things that are going on there. And we had conversations about it. And though we may have differed on uh, on how he handled things and such, we were able to have a, a conversation and, and hug each other. We used to go to church together, this particular guy. And, you know, it. so it started there with Rhonda and I this morning. And, and then they, they have a barbecue at the end. And uh, we left here. Uh, we, we donated our sound system for that. We've done it for the last about five, six years. But uh, anyhow, then we left here and we went over to uh, outside at KMVT out on the grass. Uh, a, a, there was a, a ribbon cutting for a new organization and a, and a friend of, of mine I knew was about to get an award. So we run over there and I saw they didn't have a sound system. And I knew that there was a, a, that award that was going to be presented, even though he didn't know. And, um, and so we just, you know, we had our sound system from this. So we drug it out, out and set it up and got to talk to people and people thanked us and, and, and we thanked them. And, and it was just this, this wonderful moment, even with the Chamber of Commerce was there for their ribbon cutting. And I know I've said some words that have been tied against them uh, in, in the past. And, and, but yet we just still get along. And, and, and I, we left there and Rhonda and I, we agreed. We got to talking and she said, you know, we should do more of this. It feels good kind of getting out in the community. And I, I said, yeah, it does. And it just got me thinking. And I, and I just really started thinking about the biblical application of God's commandments, which Jesus said were love God and love your neighbor. That all the commandments, every teaching could be summarized in love God and love your neighbor. And and it, I really opened up and I just listened to what God had to say to me. And it was really simple. It's this community that I grew up in, though there's a lot of people that have moved in here from, from all over, this is still my community. And as a community, I'm looking at people that I see somebody walking along in a mask and, and the immediate thought in my head is they're on the other side. I see somebody walking around with blue hair and I think, oh boy, there goes another, you know, woke idiot that's going to mess up my, mess up my country. And I, and every person you see immediately there's a judgment of which side are they on are they on their side or my side are they a friendly or are they my enemy and and without even realizing it we let this creep in and as I got to thinking about it I thought this is my family and how would I treat things differently if I viewed everybody as my family? You know, I, when I, like I said, I grew up in church, and there was a church in Caldwell that I, I helped uh, several different leadership roles in. I, I, I led the choir, and I led the worship service, and I taught a college, a college and career class. At one point, I was helping out uh, to administrate the daycare when the, when the administrator couldn't work for a while, and I, I stepped in and helped with that. I, I donated time to teach PE at the school. I mean, it, but we, we ran about 250 people every Sunday. There was about 350, 400 people that were members of the church. And there were people that I, that I really got along with, my friends, my brothers and sisters, and we went and did things together. There were other people in the church that I didn't agree with, that I, that I thought were a little bit off, that were a little bit weird. But I treated them different because they were my family. They were my church family. And so even those that, that were a little bit of a thorn in the side, and, and we all have those, we all know who they are, but they were still my family. And if somebody did something that I didn't agree with, I didn't get on here and start blasting them. I didn't raise up a big protest to go out and yell and scream and fuss and cuss because there's a way that you're supposed to handle things biblically. And, and when you handle things that way, whether you believe in God or not, when you handle things this way, and you look at people differently, and you treat them as though they're a part of your family, then you seek to resolve the issue, not to break them down, not to destroy them. You seek to help, not to destroy. And I think this is the big, biggest problem that we have, is that we've stopped looking at each other as our community. We've stopped looking at them as our brothers and sisters. And, and when somebody does something we don't like, they get this cancel culture. We're gonna, we're gonna cancel them, we're gonna destroy them. But biblically, what if I have a problem with somebody, I'm supposed to first say, hey, brother, can we talk? Because 
I disagree with you, and I would like to, an opportunity to explain why. Instead of, listen, you stupid, and, and off you go. If they won't hear you, then you grab a friend, and you go in with a friend, and you sit down and say, hey, you know, now, now we're all, to all three of us together. Um, you know, seriously, I, I really want this to work out. I know that you didn't feel comfortable talking with me alone, so here's our friend that can act as a moderator, and let's work this out. And if you can't do that, then you bring it before the church. Then you bring it before everybody. Then it's time for the protest, right? But <laughs> we jump straight to protest, and we jump straight to canceling, and we jump straight to destroying each other. And I ask again, is this working? The answer is no. Our country's not getting better. It's getting worse. Our, our community's not getting better. It's getting worse. The division, the gulf between our police officers and the community is getting worse. The gulf between the, the folks down here at our, at our city hall and the people is getting further and further. It's growing further and further at distance. And, and the further away that we move from the people that are supposed to represent us, but how can they represent us if, 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 we don't, if we're not friends, if we're not family, if we can't sit down and have a conversation and work things through and talk things out? So here's what I propose. This, this is what I want to do. I think we need to start bringing this community back together. I think we need to start getting together and acting like family again. I think right here at this city park that we ought to have just a big old family day. Big family get together. Heath Clark, I'm going to give you a call. I think we ought to have some local bands, okay? Uh, uh, it, you, you and I will talk this out. We'll figure this out. But I want to bring some local bands together to perform. I want to, I want to invite the police officers to come down here, all of them from our sheriff's department, our Idaho State Police, um, and our, uh, and, and our uh, uh, local police department. I think I want to have, not in your uniforms, okay? I want to have all of the police come down here and, and bring their families. And let's, as a community, let's have just a big old potluck. Let's have a big barbecue. Let's set up together churches. I'm going to be talking to some of your churches. Chief Kingsbury, if this gets to you, I want to sit down with you and I want to have a talk. Sheriff Carter, uh, Tom, you know, Tom, you and I have differed on some things. And, uh, you know, we used to be friends. And, and, I, and I think if we're going to rebuild this community, I want to say this, I'm going to say this publicly, Tom. I disagreed with you and how you were handling something. But I said some things publicly that I shouldn't have, and I didn't act in a manner that a friend would have acted, and that a good member of this community would have acted. And I want to publicly say to you, I'm sorry for that. I'm not sorry for holding you accountable. Um, we're supposed to do that as as people of our community. Um, you know, we pay our taxes, uh, and and you and you work for our community. So as your employer, we're supposed to we're supposed to let you know when we're not happy with something. Um, but I could have handled that a lot differently, and I want to publicly apologize to you, Tom. I'm sorry. And I hope that you and I can come together and figure out a way to make this work. Chief Kingsbury, I've been kind of hard on you guys in a manner that, that was not. If, if, if I can apologize, and, and I, I do, I'm sorry, okay? I, I, man, I, I met you when you first came to town. I love you and your wife. And, uh, and, and you were very nice to me out here, but it, I, I can tell there's something in there between us. And, and a lot of that's on my side on how I handled things. And if I can start the healing in my community, my town, this town I grew up in. If I can start the healing with an apology, so be it. And this is hard to do. But when you call somebody out publicly, you need to apologize and make and make it right publicly. And though I adamantly, and I think it's very clear, I adamantly disagreed with how some members of our community were handling things, some leadership in our community were handling them. I have to hold myself accountable for for my part, and I have a voice in this community. And as such, it needs to. I need to be responsible with that. Um, Sean Berger. We were friends before all of this. 
And I let disagreements with how things were being handled get the better of me. And I got angry. And I was not very kind to you in this community. And I owe you an apology too, sir. And I want to do it publicly. I hope that people will make sure that this gets over to them. Um, and I want to apologize to you for how I conducted myself. Because I think if folks like you and I could come together and some of the other people that are that are in our city council, if we can come together, and I know there's many others that I that this is a blanket apology for how I've conducted myself. We need to come together. We all need to figure this out. Everybody in our community, we got to figure out how to sit down and start having conversations again. But we need to work together to start bringing this community back together so we can see each other as family. Whether we agree or disagree with how things ought to be run and how this country ought to be ought to be run and whether we ought to be more left or more right. Okay, we can disagree on that, but we can do it in in a in an in a humane manner with each other. So, I'm going to reach out to you too, Sean, um, and I'm going to reach out to the middle, the our city council, and anybody else. If you are a business owner, if you want to be a part of this, I really think that the way that we start to do this is that I'd like to have a big barbecue out here and start with the police force because I see right now crime is going crazy. We have fentanyl is going crazy, and. It's, and these are the people that are enforcing the laws, but they are in the community. They are out there. And if we as a community can reach across the aisle and they as the police force can reach across the aisle, we can start seeing each other as, as, as brothers and sisters in the same community again. Maybe we can tackle some of these problems that we're having in our community together. Maybe instead of it's the people against the, the city council, you know, you run for office, I get it. You run for office, you have all these great ideas about how things ought to be run and how you can do them better. And, and you come in with, with that ideology. And so you campaign and you get voted in and you get in there and then doggone it, we the people get in your way of, of your agenda, what it was that you went in there with all these bright ideas. I get it. So you start seeing us as the enemy and then you're doing things we don't like. We start seeing you as the enemy, but we got to get rid of this enemy ideology and get to a point where we can just sit down and say, I, I, wouldn't it be great everybody in this community if you just felt like you could just get on the phone and call up somebody from the, from the city council and say, hey man, uh, can we go to lunch? I, I want to talk to you about this project that's going on here. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I might disagree with you, but uh, but um, I, I'm just hoping that maybe you can hear me out. And we went and had lunch instead of just blasting each other and canceling each other. But we can't do that if we don't think each other of each other as community members, as brothers and sisters, as, as members. Um, I, I think it would be wonderful if churches would come together with me on this. I'm going to reach out to some of you folks and uh, some of the pastors and, and say, why don't we just hold an event? But the police, I want you to come in here in a t-shirt, okay? Wear a t-shirt that maybe has something on it that says that, that you are a, a sheriff or an Idaho State Police, but not your full get up. I want you to come with your family and be a part of this community family. And I want our community to reach out and, and see you as human beings again. And I want you to see us as human beings again, not as separate people, but as equal people that are, that are trying to find a way to make this Magic Valley a light in our state. And if we can heal this community, then maybe other communities will start to take the same action. And maybe we can get our state back, not our state back as, as in it, it becomes the, the rights idea or the left's idea of a state, but a state that loves each other and can come together and actually communicate again. And that's my mission, is to do my part to try to do that. And I'm hoping that you folks out there will join together with me. If you want to be a part of this, send me a message. But I'm tired. Tired of the hate. I'm tired of the fighting. I'm tired of this watching this great 
United States, yes, but more importantly, Twin Falls and the Magic Valley and the state of Idaho, I'm just tired of seeing it ripped apart. I'm tired of the hate and the bickering. Doesn't mean that I'm going to back down on what's right and what's wrong and that I'm not going to continue speaking the truth. But I want to do it from a position of love, not as a hate. And I want to encourage everybody to get together with me on this. Let's put this together. Let's do this this summer. And let's have a good time and start working on ways that we can bring this thing back. Thanks.